JBN keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones and in the news. Convicted former NCB manager ordered to repay close to $120 million. Former senior manager at the National Commercial Bank, Andrea Gordon, who was convicted of swindling $34 million from the financial institution and was sentenced to seven and a half years in 2021, has been ordered to repay close to $120 million. On Wednesday, the Financial Investigations Division FID was successful in the Supreme Court in securing a forfeiture order of $119.1 million against Gordon. Investigators revealed that based on assessment, Gordon's criminal benefits amounted to just under $200 million. However, through her attorney, Gordon admitted to swindling $119 million through her illegal activities. The money was stolen between January 1, 2017 and May 30, 2020. In addition to the $119 million, Gordon was also ordered to pay $720,000 as well as legal costs for the bank and the Crown. Her Haven Deal property will also be placed on the market. Proceeds from the sale will be turned over to NCB. In 2021, Gordon was sentenced to seven years and six months in prison after she was convicted on three counts of access with intent to commit an offence, Cybercrime Act, three counts of larceny as a servant, larceny act, seven counts of money laundering, and engaging in a transaction involving criminal property, proceeds of crime act, poker. Body of man found in plastic bag. The body of a man was unwrapped in a clear plastic bag on Calabar Road in Kingston on Wednesday night. The police said the body is of a dark complexion, about 5 feet 11 inches long, has a low cut hair style and appears to be in his late 20s to early 30s. The body was clad in a black t-shirt with a picture of a headphone and black shorts. The police report that about 10.40 p.m. residents stumbled upon the body and raised an alarm. On arrival of the police, the body was seen wrapped in a clear plastic bag. The scene was processed and the body was removed to the morgue for a post-mortem. Anyone who may be able to identify the body or assist the police in their investigations is asked to contact the Denham Town Criminal Investigations Branch at 876-948-6443, Police 119 Emergency Number or Crime Stop at 311. Man shot dead while cleaning up the front of his home in Kingston. The Constant Spring Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the shooting death of a man on Manning's Road in Kingston. The deceased has been identified as Marlon Byfield, otherwise called Sniper, of a man in Zill Road address. Reports are that about 12.20 p.m., Byfield was waking in front of his yard on Tuesday when gunshots were heard. On arrival of the police, he was seen lying in a pool of blood with what appeared to be gunshot wounds. He was rushed to a medical facility where he was pronounced dead. Garbage collector shot and killed another injured in Portmore. Two sanitation workers employed to the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, were shot about 10.30 a.m. Wednesday while collecting garbage in Portmore, St. Catherine. One of the men, Satish James, has since succumbed to his injuries while the other has been admitted to hospital in serious condition. It's supported that the men were in the process of collecting household waste in the Portsmouth area when they were attacked by gunmen who opened fire on them. They were rushed to hospital where James was pronounced dead on arrival. The other worker was admitted. Executive Director of the NSWMA, Audley Gordon, has condemned the killing of James. I must say that this incident came as a shock to us because you usually have very good relationships out in the communities, Gordon said. He said he hopes that this is an isolated incident and not the beginning of a trend. He further stated that every effort will be made to ensure there is no disruption in service as a result of the incident. Negril taxi operator charge after allegedly threatening to kill man. A 20-year-old taxi operator has been charged with assault of common law and the possession of a prohibited weapon after allegedly using a gun to threaten to kill another man on Tuesday. Charges David Kennedy, otherwise called Brown Man, of Tankill, Negril in Westmoreland. According to reports from the Negril police station, about 6 p.m., a man was at his home when Kennedy allegedly approached and pointed a gun at him and threatened to kill him. In fear for his life, 
The man reportedly ran from his house to the police station where he made a report. On Wednesday, May 24, Kennedy was arrested on charge after being pointed out to the police. His court date is being finalized. Pregnant woman killed five days before due date. Come Saturday, Shadi Pink Samuel was expecting to welcome a new addition as she was scheduled to give birth to her second child. However, five days before her due date, the 28-year-old was shot and killed at Campbell Avenue in Port Antonio, Portland. Her unborn child, as well as Kino James, 23, also perished in the gun attack, which took place at a recreational spot in the area shortly after 11 p.m. Shade's uncle, Alton Pink, said the family has been plunged further into mourning as her sister died a few weeks ago. It is a sad period for the family, as we were making preparations to bury our other sister, Daniel, who died in a motor vehicle accident in Westmoreland about three weeks ago, said Pink. So this is at double jeopardy. She was in an advanced state of pregnancy and was scheduled to give birth on Saturday, which would have been her second child. So technically two lives were lost on my family side. Shadi's father was planning to return to Jamaica to bury his daughter Daniel, but yet again, another tragedy has struck. Commanding officer for the Portland Police Division, Superintendent Lloyd Darby, said that the double murder shattered the peace once enjoyed by residents at Campbell Avenue, Alfred Lane, and other adjoining communities. The police reported that shortly after 11 p.m., men traveling in a car went to an area of Campbell Avenue, where people normally gather to play dominoes and ludo. According to the reports, a car drove up and a man exited the vehicle from the rear, opening gunfire hitting Shade and James. The pregnant woman was reportedly shot in the head while James, who ran off, was shot in the back. He fell in the adjoining Alfred Lane. They were rushed to hospital but were pronounced dead on arrival. Darby said that the police are following several leads as they attempt to solve the murder. It is too early to confirm any of them, but we are doing all that is necessary in terms of crime scene, in terms of scientific evidence, eyewitnesses, to see if we can solve this murder. We're also noting at this time that the female was the target of this attack, and so we're focusing on that investigative lead, Darby said. Passers by would just up and play dominoes while drinking soup or eating a piece of jerk chicken, which was always available. Businesswoman Diane Lindo expressed shock at the murders. She said that James had gained employment at her business establishment, Rob Auto in Port Antonio, and was set to begin working in the summer. It was a bright spark, having graduated from Teach High School with about seven CSEC passes and four passes in Cape. I also learned that he was planning to join the Jamaica Defense Force, Lindo said. JTA President calls for industrial strike action over compensation review. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, Los Sonia Harrison, is calling on educators across the island to support industrial action against the government for what she describes as discrepancies and anomalies following the recent compensation review. In an audio message, Harrison urged educators to stand together to ensure they are properly compensated, expressing that one teacher not paid correctly or underpaid affects all of us. Several teachers have been negatively impacted by the implementation of the restructuring exercise, also known as the compensation review. Many anomalies came to light from the initial payments made in March 2023. The JTS brought some to the attention of our employers from the get-go. Official communication was first sent to Minister Clark on April 18, 2023, requesting establishment of a technical committee to treat with anomalies and discrepancies. To date, no response, she said. I let in the teachers hope issues would have been sorted and that their April salaries would reflect such. According to Harrison, teachers who have already been paid for this month, according to Harrison, teachers who have already been paid for this month have indicated that salary issues remain unresolved. She has therefore called in educators to voice their displeasure through industrial action. Teachers are expected to be on a two-day strike as of Thursday. This continued disrespect and regard for us as teachers is unacceptable. We must arise and register our displeasure. To make a bad situation worse, those who have received their salaries this month confirm that anomalies or discrepancies are yet to be fixed. Colleagues, it is time to act, she said. She noted that teachers of Westmoreland, St. Elizabeth, Manchester, Clarendon, Kingston, St. Andrew and St. Thomas will register their displeasure via industrial action on May 25, Thursday and May 26, Friday. 
Teachers in Hanover, St. James, Trelawney, St. Anne, St. Mary and Portland will take industrial strike action May 29 and 30. The entire island takes further industrial strike action May 31 and June 1. We are professionals and the government needs to respond to us in like manner. All we ask is our fair due. Pay our teachers that which they agreed to. Establish the technical committee to treat with anomalies, Harrison stated. The JTA says it remains resolute in its call to get the government's attention. The association was the only union present on Monday. The association was the only union present on Monday at what was advertised as a joint press conference of unions to state their position on the government's compensation review. Representatives of the Jamaica Police Federation and the National Workers Union of Jamaica who were invited to join the JT at its headquarters on Church Street in downtown Kingston did not show up. Cops without criminals in Mount Salem amid spiking violence. Commanding officer for the St. James Police Division, Senior Superintendent Vernon Ellis, says the police are willing to do whatever it takes to weed out criminal elements whom he says have been wreaking havoc in Mount Salem in the parish. Ellis, while urging citizens to continue feeding law enforcers useful tips to help in their fight against crime, said the area had been relatively peaceful over the past six or seven years, but has seen a spike in violent crimes over the past few weeks. So the Crawford Street area in the Mount Salem zone, this was a very troubled area, I would say about six, seven years ago. You know, things were very bad. When the zone was launched, we came in for the clearing phase of it and most of the persons who were the cause of the problem, they would have been arrested by the security forces. Those who were not arrested, they would have fled the zones of special operations. I must say too that some of them who fled the zone, they were not really wanted by the police. So even if we had pursued them and held them, pretty much they would have been naturally released. So we saw where for three years, this entire space was without a murder. The area was under good control. I would say the social intervention, the input of the police and all the stakeholders was something that made the space not only safer but we saw the entire area transforming. Now over the past I would say a month ago we've seen where we've had a flare-up and from the flare-up we're looking at five persons and I would say for the entire zones of special operation it is five devils some cowards who would have fled the area and they are back and forth inside the space that are actually causing the problem i would say right now two of them are properly wanted by the police department and another three of them are actually persons of interest now from the police side we've invested september is six years we've invested a lot of asset time and a lot of intervention techniques have been put into making this place safe and i won't go into the reduction of murders because the, the statistics will show you that there is a significant decrease in the numbers of murder however i think it is a little bit insensitive the loss of the life of one person is pretty much too much and um, you can use statistics to measure the pain that somebody feels when they actually lose a family member. But one of the things that I will say that we, the police, will be doing this trip. So the persons who we have who are wanted inside the zone and those who are persons of interest, I am telling you that we are going to pursue them this time. And when we pursue them, we are going to overtake them. And when we overtake them, we are not going to stop at that. We are going to consume them and ensure that this zone returns to a safe place for the citizens of Crawford Street and Mount Salem. So the citizens, they have been cooperating. We get a lot of uh, tips from anonymous persons and we appreciate that just continue to send the tips to our respective tip lines 
and um, the communities that the guys would have migrated to, I asked the citizens to be on the lookout for them and to share the information with us so we can speed up the process in meeting these persons who are causing the zone to be in a little difficult state considering what it was before. I, I am of the opinion that if these persons who we've analyzed to be the, the problems, one is in custody, four is on the run, if we should do something about them, then this space will return to normalcy. Uh, we are determined to do it and um, we ask the citizens to just continue to feed our tip lines, to reach out to us, the police department, give us the type of information that will allow us to act swiftly with precision on the persons who we want from inside the zone. JBN will keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.